Speaker, with the passage of how do you seek the floor? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would I be in order for a point of personal privilege? It is that time of the day. You are in order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House, uh, over the weekend, I was catching up on the, on the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump. I watched uh, all the video that, that they presented, and I and watched while Vice President Pence came within 50 feet of an angry mob who was, sh who was shouting, Hang Mike Pence. Hang Mike Pence. I listened to the description of, Senate, or of Speaker Pelosi's staff when they barricaded themselves in her office, and as they listened to the fuming horde as they tried to break down that same office door as they chanted, where's Nancy? I watched as Senator Romney was turned around just before he ran headlong to that same angry mob. But the scariest portion of what I witnessed last weekend, the one thing that made me the maddest was listening to desperate Capitol Police as they were overrun by those traitorous insurrectionists. They're approaching the wall now. We're being overrun, panic Capitol Police shouted as they were being overtaken on that day. Cruiser 50, give me DSO up here right now. DSO, multiple law enforcement injuries. DSO, get up here. Brian Sicknick was one of those officers trying to protect our capital, our legislators, and our democracy that day. Officer Sicknick was laid with honors in the rotunda of our U.S. Capitol on February the 2nd. Officer Sicknick was given this honor due to the fact that on January 6th, he was viciously murdered when he tried to protect our capital from a traitorous mob when they attacked our U.S. Capitol, tried to overthrow our democracy, and murdered our elected official, tried to murder our elected officials. According to witnesses, Officer Sicknick died when that mob beat him over the head with a fire extinguisher. Another traitor used the American flag with the American flag, the American flag pole, excuse me, with the American flag still on it, and used that flag to spear and pound another police officer. A flag that those officers were defending with their lives. Six people died that day. Officers ended up with head damage and brain damage. One officer had a heart attack. And because of the trauma of that day, two officers have since taken their own lives. If these traitorous acts of January 6th did not enrage you and make you fear for our democracy, I don't know what will. And why did this happen? These long-standing feelings of rage, humiliation, racism, and hatred did not explode simultaneously. They were fueled and unleashed by a two-month-long barrage of lies and incendiary rhetoric by Donald Trump. That's what turned those feelings into action. Free and fair elections are trans that are transparent are the cornerstone of our democracy. That is what happened on November the 3rd. And the results of those elections must be respected by all those concerned. If you feel that an election was not free and fair, you can challenge those results in court and show actual evidence that the results of that election should be overturned. Once challenges are exhausted, however, all patriots must respect the results expressed at the ballot box for a peaceful transfer of power. Donald Trump is no patriot. With no evidence whatsoever, Donald Trump spread lie after lie, falsehood after falsehood, ginning up an angry mob with visions of how they must take back Trump's country. Tweets like, be there, will be wild. Talk of stolen elections and illegitimate presidents. Trump exhorted his followers that they must fight, stop the steal, 
and declared we will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede where there's theft involved. Trump's call to immediate action was clear and unequivocal. And we fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Congressman Mo Brooks told wild rally goers to start taking down names and kicking ass. Rudy Giuliani said that this was going to be a trial by contact, combat, excuse me. And the right wing militants took their leader's commands to heart. Directed by the president and complicit Republicans who refused to honor the will of the people, they threatened the integrity of our democracy, interfered with the peaceful transition of power, and killed patriotic Americans. These actions are indefensible. Yet the only responses I've heard from my colleagues in the majority party were from Representative Fisher, who commented on Facebook, we will survive. Remember, our side has the guns. The other side doesn't know which bathroom to use. Or from Senator Whiting, who made up a fantasy about June protests and said he was whisked off to a secret room to count guns and bullets because, and I quote, we didn't know if we were going to make it out or if we were going to have to shoot our way out. Or from Majority Leader Winchettel, who lumped Black Lives Matters and Antifa together and then threw them all together with the traitorous mobs in January. Those responses are also indefensible. When the Civil War was all but won, President Lincoln wanted to tour Richmond, Virginia, the capital of the insurrectionists of that time. There, he met a Union general who asked how, he conquered this, how the conquered city should be treated. If I were your, in your place, I'd let him up easy, said Lincoln. Let him up easy. While Lincoln, who had confronted the most serious such act in U.S. history, wanted to let him up, many Trump supporters have embraced a similar cry and what could be the second most serious act of insurrection in U.S. history? Let him off. This as the Senate has ended a formal trial of Donald Trump, who exhorted a mob to violence and became the first president to be impeached twice. We need to get America back on a path towards unity, says Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Impeachment would be a, a major step backward, said Lindsey Graham. It's kicking when he's down, complained Representative Darrell Issa, who calls Trump's insurrections a misstep. Numerous conservative pundits argue that impeaching Trump would only inflame the 74 million people who voted for him, as if that was calm deliberation they displayed at the Capitol. The brazen gall of Trump enablers in Washington and here in Iowa, even at this late date, defies exaggeration. Let him up easy, said Lincoln once upon a time, and we did. So easy that no stench of shame is now attached to an act of insurrection that left 750,000 Americans dead. To the contrary, almost 16 decades later, a Trump supporter felt empowered to march through the very Capitol building of the United States, hosting a filthy battle flag of that rebel cause. The point is not mercy and that mercy and, and uh, reconciliation are bad. They're not. But to have meaning, mercy and reconciliation must follow repentance and accountability. Does anyone sense repentance and accountability from Trump or his followers? Not even close. Not when lawmakers tell us they have the guns. Not when lawmakers make up stories about shooting their way out. Not when lawmen try to distract us by trying to compare a protest to an insurrection. So let's not be distracted by disingenuous moral appeals. The world is watching. It must see every single voter who can be identified, every single rioter, excuse me, who can be identified, prosecuted to the maximum extent of the law. 
We must see consequences for every person who gave these traitorous mobsters verbal solace. And it must see Donald Trump held to answer for his crimes. We must see him punished. He must spend the remainder of his life as either a defendant in criminal or civil trials or behind bars. Or else let, it, let us never again hold ourselves up as a beacon of democracy or a nation of laws. We let him up easy once before, and we're still dealing with those repercussions. Let's not make the same mistake again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Potawatomi. For what purpose do you seek the floor? Mr. Speaker, would I be in order for a point of personal privilege? You are in order. Yes. Uh, uh, last week, there was a letter penned. Uh, it was ascribed initially to uh, the dying uh, Rush Limbaugh, and it was not uh, written by Mr. Limbaugh, but I think it captured the essence of the feelings of 80 million Americans at the time as uh, uh, we move forward in our nation's history. Uh, President Trump, I just want to say thank you for the last four years. Thank you for making it cool to be an American again. Thank you for showing us that we don't need to be under China's thumb anymore, economically or any other way. Thank you for one of the strongest economies we've ever experienced in my lifetime. Thank you for all you have done for the minority communities and the outstanding decrease in the unemployment rate you had. Thank you for making it feel good to love our country and to be a proud patriot again. Thank you for supporting our nation's flag and the men and women who fought for the freedom that stands behind that flag. Thank you for supporting our nation's law enforcement organizations who endorsed you and understanding how difficult their job really is. Thank you for quelling the flood of illegal immigration. Thank you for bringing jobs back to America to make our own products and put Americans back to work again. Thank you for bringing our troops home from endless deployments that presented us with little more than body bags and for your commitment to strengthen our military. Thank you for your Operation Warp Speed and keeping your promise to bringing the COVID-19 vaccine to us in less than a year. Thank you for your never-ending attempts at bringing peace to the Middle East and your support for Israel. Thank you for your tax relief and thank you for our energy independence. Most of all, though, thank you for taking a really difficult job that you never had to take. Thank you for caring enough for this country to want to try and make a difference. Thank you for showing America how little career politicians actually work for their constituents and for showing us how much those politicians despise you for showing America how easy it is to build a great nation rather than uh, bring her into line their own products and stock portfolios. Thank you for allowing us to experience a president that wasn't a lifelong politician, but a lifelong American. Thank you, Mr. President Donald John Trump. You did your best. Mr. Speaker, beam me up, Scotty. I yield the balance of my time. The House in order. The House is in order. Seeing no further business come before the House, you've all heard the motion. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. no. The House is adjourned.